I think that we lost that um, sense, fear. Mm. I don't think that we, we do feel it. Maybe we fear for our loved ones, mm -hmm. but we don't fear for ourselves. If I leave, who's going to do my job? Yes. Who's going to tell the world what is happening actually mm -hmm. in Gaza? Mm -hmm. It has been almost eight months now. 35,000 Palestinians have been killed. The first thing that Gazans need is mm -hmm. a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. You were being reporting from Gaza for almost 200 days. So how difficult for you to carry on the daily reporting? We actually faced so many problems uh, mm -hmm. during our reporting. I mean, we can start with the cutting of the communication on Gaza. And we were like 100% isolated from the whole world. And mm -hmm. even my colleagues here in China, they were worried, like, what is happening to Noor? Is our team OK? Mm -hmm. Adding all the problems of the cutting of the electricity, the starvation, no food, no water. Mm -hmm. I mean, in so many occasions, I, I felt like I will just faint in front of the camera, like, while mm -hmm. doing the, the, the live. But we, still keep uh, strong to be able to uh, tell the story from the Palestinian side. There is a number, I think you know, nearly 110 journalists and uh, media workers were killed since this war began. So why do you risk your life to keep reporting from Gaza? During the coverage of my coverage on Gaza, you would be working inside hospitals or schools or open air areas and the airstrikes would just happen like uh, just next to you or inside the place that you were covering so yes it is not safe um, as long as you are in Gaza your life is uh, under a threat of being killed so actually we were very much risking our lives to send uh, the videos and the reports that are showing what is happening on the ground in uh, Gaza but this what we wanted to do this is the responsibility on the Palestinian journalists on the ground and I, I just um, knew that I needed to stay there to keep on my work because actually I am one of few um, English speaking TV correspondents in Gaza so I had this thought like if I leave who's gonna do my job yes. who's gonna tell the world what is happening actually in Gaza and I did not leave until I made sure that there is someone else that is now doing my job yeah but are you afraid sometimes afraid yeah uh, no 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 we I, I think that we lost that um, sense fear mm. I don't think that we we do feel it maybe we fear for our loved ones mm -hmm. but we don't fear for ourselves like uh, for example, when I was in Gaza, I did not fear for myself, but I, I wanted to evacuate my children because I did not want them to, to go through that. Mostly children, I mean. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I watched the video you evacuating your children. Is that very hard for you? It was a, a hard and an easy decision to make. I always say that mm -hmm. it was um, it was easy because it was the right thing to do because uh, most of the Israeli strikes were random. They targeted houses, homes, streets, open air areas, hospitals, schools. So and thousands of children were killed. So the right thing to do back then was is to evacuate my children. So I made the very hard decision of. Um, Okay, with my children to Rafa. I will stay here. Sarah, I love you. Hey, Ati. Very, very hard day on me. I am going back alone now into Gaza. It was hard at the same time because it is not hard for a mother yeah. to, you know, separate with you. Yes, child. exactly. 
Happy birthday, Bassam and Sara. I took Happy my children and we evacuated Gaza and I took a quick video of my home. I did not realize at that point that I'm not coming back to this home and if I came back it's not going to be the same and this actually what happened. Now I've lost my home. The the only memories that I actually have now is that one video, one like it's like 3 seconds like and it was so quick. I think that must be very hard for you. I really hope that with the more and more international attention, the situation there would become better. Um, I watched a video one or two weeks ago. Uh, in that video, a Palestinian girl cried and said, uh, I'm so tired, no one is standing with us. Is that a common state of mind of gardens? I could say that yes, most of people in Gaza now do feel the same. I actually um, never thought that this uh, war will last for this long, for almost eight uh, months. I never thought that this war will also turn our lives upside down, like turn the life of more than 2.3 million Gazans upside down. Um, we never thought that we will reach that uh, point. I mean, we're talking about around 230 days of this Israeli war on Gaza. We're talking more than 35,000 people who were killed, more than 10,000 that are uh, missing. So these are catastrophic numbers. So yes, this is very much affecting the uh, also mental uh, health of the people of Gaza. I lost a very dear friend to me. Her name is Islam. She was killed in an Israeli uh, strike on the Al Nusayra refugee camp. The day that Islam was killed, I had a mental breakdown. I had like um, a trauma that uh, I just don't want to remember. I lost 24 members of my family, but I did not shed a tear. And it is not because I am not sad, but I think it is because of the trauma that I got after the killing of Islam. And uh, I just had to live through it, to cope with it. And I knew at that point that no matter whatever happens to me or my family, I need to keep working. I need to still get the message of the people of Gaza and what is happening in Gaza to the outside world. Does your family support your job? They must be worried somehow. Yeah, they don't support my job. They don't. No. My mother, she's like all the time calling me, Noor, just make sure you are okay. We don't want to lose you. Uh, you are the only child that we have. How do Gallants view this conflict? What do they want most now? Um, peace with Israel or something else? Well, for now, Gazans, the first thing that Gazans need is a ceasefire. This yeah. should just stop now. It has mm -hmm. been almost eight months now. 35,000 Palestinians have been killed. Um, 10,000 others were missing. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, this catastrophic number, uh, the war of starvation, people are struggling, they have lost their homes. So, the one and most important thing for Palestinians now is for this war to stop, just to stop. It is even more important than allowing a humanitarian aid. Like, if you go out in the streets of Gaza now and you ask them, like, what would yeah. you pick? A humanitarian aid now for 24 hours all the day long or the stop of this war. They would tell you we will choose this, the, a ceasefire. This war need to be stopped. So do you believe in the two-state solution? This uh, agreement of the two-state solution mm. uh, was founded by the UN back in 67, but it has been now seven, 57 years mm. since this mm. agreement. It has been uh, 57 years where Palestinians are fighting for their right of ex existence. And seeing what is happening in Gaza and seeing the Israeli aggression on, uh, on Gaza, it, it gives you this idea that the Israeli side does not want the two-state solution. Even if the Palestinian people wanted a two-state solution, we are not sure if the Israeli side really 
mm -hmm. uh, what the, Will you go back to Gaza to continue your reporting after this visit to China? Well, yes. I was actually mm -hmm. planning that as soon as I go back from China, mm -hmm. I will be back to Gaza. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the Israeli forces started their ground in region in Rafah. They have uh, closed now the Rafah border. So basically, we are all Palestinians who left Gaza are now uh, locked outside of Gaza. And those people who are still in Gaza, they are locked in Gaza. So for now, unfortunately, even after I finish my visit to China, I will not be able to go back to Gaza. But as soon as the border reopens, I will for sure 100% go back to Gaza. I do have the remains and the ashes of my home back in uh, Gaza. So I consider myself as a displaced Palestinian for now until we go back to Gaza. At last, I, uh, please allow me to pay you my greatest respect from journalist to journalist. And uh, my best wishes to you, your family and your colleagues still in Gaza. Take care of yourself and be safe. Thank and you. thanks again for talking to us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm very happy to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>